So, guys, I'm back. Uh, if you see a little glare on the screen, I just got a new phone. And, uh, yeah, it has uh, the screen protector is a little too small. I'm be going up to the store either later on today or tomorrow to get a new screen protector. So, uh, you just, just bear with me. But I did just get done watching some of that Breakfast Club interview with Larry Elder. And uh, I just want to say, to start off with, yeah, I didn't expect a lot from the get I mean, the host on the Breakfast Club, Charlemagne Envy, and I don't know why they keep having the the the, the Talzon lady on, but you know it's an agenda they got to get. You know they got to have the strong black woman. Being combative isn't strong. Being ignorant, rude to your guests, talking over people, turning your neck up at people—that's not the definition of strong. That's ignorant. That's rude. That's all the words I just described. Envy sat it there and pouted like a child. And you know what is reminiscent of to me is when DJ, I don't know if y'all remember, but I used to watch The Breakfast Club a lot before I started getting to other content creators. And just before I started to see, like, they really have their own narratives when it comes to certain guests and certain topics. I'm not saying that I 100% agree with everything everybody says, even the people that I rock with. But I'm going to challenge your points of views the way I don't, the way I disagree with, with people that I disagree with, if that makes sense. Like, yo, he just sat there and pouted like a little kid and was mad that he had to have a Republican on, so to speak. The same way they were, they were with Vivek, but he was, he was just buttoning and out saying a bunch of irrelevant things. But it also, you could also tell that he knew he was out of his league with that conversation. Now, Charlemagne. Again, I didn't expect a lot from him because once again, like I used to, part of the reason I used to watch The Breakfast Club was because of Charlemagne. I was a big fan of his. I used to be a fan of a lot of the antics that he had. But once he grew, um, a lot of his growth really is just him saying some intelligent things here or there, but also him pandering and trying to come off like he's more intelligent than he actually is. If you don't believe me, go watch the Dick Gregory interview. Dick Gregory checks him multiple times. And I remember there's a part in the interview where Charlamagne's trying to joke with him. Charlamagne's trying to throw a bunch of nonsense out there and Dick Gregory wasn't having it at all. Dick Gregory was like, I thought they said you were smart. Go back and watch that Dick Gregory interview. This is when they had Angelo on, obviously. He said, I thought they said, they said you were smart. Broken down. Now, here we have a 70 year old Larry Elder and I've came across some of his content. Um, some of the things I agree with, a lot of the things I agree with and uh, some of the things I don't, he's actually running. We know he won't win, but it is what it is. I do agree with some of his points. Um, shout out to them for having him on. I already knew what time it was. Once they have on someone that's not a Democrat, you kind of know they're not going to let them talk. They're going to, especially the, the, the Tao Zone character. Um, I don't even care to pronounce her name correctly. I know I usually apologize, but she's just so out of there. And it's, bro, it's, it's literally hard listening to her. Like, I might die of a stroke listening to this woman. And every time they have on a guest where you think, like, yo, this is going to be a good conversation. For some reason, she just gets like eerily combative. Like it's just it's 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 frustrating. <laughs> like I don't know what other way to put it, man. I, I really had to fight myself not to just turn it off and turn the screen and put on something else and you know read my Bible, do some journaling, maybe do some push-ups or something. I don't know, man. The fitness journey is going good, by the way. Um, yeah, bro. I don't know. Jesus Christ, like out of all the guests they could have on to if you were if you already had it in your mind that you were gonna refute what he said, out of all the guests to have on, don't you think you have on someone a little bit more intelligent in what they wanted to combat this person with? Like she proved last time when they had Vivek on that she's way out of her league. And she's a person that loves to hear herself talk even though she knows that it's some nonsense like bro you ever hear somebody talk and you know that they know like yo you lying but they believe their own liar yo you, you talking some bull stuff right now but the way they say it and their tone is tonality and their mannerisms it's like wow you actually believe that like 
she talks as if she was really bodying this man and every single time he was hitting her with facts. And the thing about it is once Larry Elder started to hit them with facts, he's seen like he went in the lion's den and not only went in the lion's den and survived, he went in the lion's den and feasted. So once Larry Elder, you know, kind of got warmed up to what's about that was going to, you know, what the interview was kind of going to be like, he just let loose like and he did it. He didn't he got a little bit visibly frustrated, but that's what happens in debates. But he wasn't like like he wasn't like about to lose his core or anything like, yo, he broke them down with facts again. And like I said, every time they put the camera on Envy, like he was just really sitting there pouting and like, bro, as a man. I don't have kids yet, but God, bro, the guy, this guy has a wife. He has children. This is why his wife goes on vacations without him. And no girlfriends, you feel me? Like, he's, bro, he's, he's a, he's a, I don't want to get too disrespectful, but like, yo, this, this guy is very, very feminine. Like, I don't know if y'all remember the DJ drama interview when uh, allegedly him and drama has some beef in the past and. The interview is going along and Envy and Angela, I mean, Envy, Charlamagne and Angela are, are doing the interview and Envy just sitting there looking in the sky, playing with stuff on the desk. And they all like, yo, what's good with you? Like, yo, we just know you ain't even say nothing. You over there looking sad like somebody killed your dog. And he like, no, nah, man, like, uh, uh, you know, I just, you know, we, we had some issues in the past. And I'm like, I remember, I think, I, bro, I had to be in my early 20s or my mid 20s at the time. And I just remember thinking to myself, like, here you have an adult man who had an issue with another man, another light skinned man. I mean, like, the, these, these brothers is high yellow. And he had an issue with this man and couldn't even start to show off with it. I'm like, yo, man, I know we had, maybe, or just do it before the interview, but it would have made for good content had he did it with the show and start the interview off like listen man you know me and you had some issues in the past and you know i just wanted to know if we were past that simple like bro this guy sat there it literally was like 15 20 minutes into the interview and they 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 all stopped like yeah man and drama was like yo man yeah it was, i just noticed that you were kind of distant like everything was crazy and like when he when he explained it drama was like oh that's it like i thought we were past that like and then bro as soon as drama cleared the air Bro, he was all giddy, happy, like like he just got his like they just found his lost dog or something. I'm like, yo, something's off about this guy. Like, yo, he is wildly emotional. Like, yo, nigga, that's dangerous. Like, bro, wildly emotional men with testosterone shoot up schools. Those are the mass shooters. I'm not saying that he'll eventually do something like that, but it's just like, yo, bro, like you 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 could have started off the I'm I'm going off on a tangent, I know. It just like I said, because it, it it still connects to the Larry Elder interview, and I'm just like, yo, even if you feel like you're out your league, don't you think it's best to prepare before the guy gets there so you can at least chip in on a conversation on your show? Like, bro, he it's not like he was sitting back just observing a conversation, and you know, it's like, oh shit, yeah. Matter of fact, what you said, Charlamagne. Oh, I want to speak on what you were saying. Bro, he's heavy into the real estate uh, industry. He's heavy into the car industry. Can't you say something about that if you wanted to refute what he was saying about systematic oppression? If you really felt that you were being that much oppressed? But I, I just... And again, the whole systematic oppression thing, and I'm still getting well-versed on it, I don't know too much about it, but I do know that, yes, there are certain things set in a place that they don't want us to succeed, all that, right? But you have to ask yourself, what group of people in this country or any other country in the world don't have a system for the people that look like them to succeed and the people that don't to, well, figure it out? That's from, from, from the information I've gathered, what group of people don't have that? I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying what group of people don't look out for their own best interests? And also this whole systematic oppression thing, three people that seem to be doing really well in this system that always have something bad to say about it. But they want to sell you in a narrative that is so bad. Well, if it's so bad, yo, how are you living in the... The, the upper lap of luxury, Charlemagne, Envy. How are y'all able to make so much money throughout the month? How are y'all able to work for all these people that don't look like y'all? How are y'all able to be around a bunch of people that don't look like y'all? 
man, bro, I'm starting to think a lot of the people that constantly call people coons and all this stuff, like, those are the ones that's really being pimped, bro. And, like, I'm not big on the... I'm not... I don't identify as someone that's in the red pill community, especially when it comes to dating, but I understand the logic of it that once you take the red pill, not just with dating, you start to see a lot of things for what they really are out in this world. And part of the reason why I just really can't sit through a Breakfast Club interview too much, granted, I watched the the the, the, the Charlo interview, the uh, the Terrence Crawford interview, and the Jamal, Jamel Charlo interview because I'm in the boxing. Um, those are some of the, some, especially Terrence Crawford and Canelo, those are some of my favorite boxers. I really rock with uh, Charlo too, like, um, and they didn't have that towels on ladies. So they're a little bit more bearable and we're not talking about crazy real life issues. Now, granted, when Charlamagne had Canelo there, he kept asking him, well, why won't you fight him at 160? Why won't you fight him at 160? It's like, yo, my guy, there's weight classes for a reason. You're a casual, but I digress. We're talking about the Larry Elder interview and I don't want to keep getting off, um, off topic, but. The lack of respect that this Towson lady and the Breakfast Club had for a 70 year old black man who's successful, who's able to articulate himself, who's an intellect, who's running for office. Now, mind you, they sing the praises of Barack Obama, who did nothing for said community, but did everything for the alphabet community. Guys, that's that's an agenda. That's an agenda. Like, bro, I'm. I, I don't care if you're a black man or a black woman, because truthfully, if you identify with that alphabet community, you're my personal opinion. Look, I may get in trouble for this, but you're not really a part of the black community, because if you were, you wouldn't do things to destroy it. That's just me. And that goes uh, to me. That also goes to a lot of men and women that destroy the community. But really, the, the alphabet community, guys, bear with me. I'm at the laundromat. I know I'm always at the laundromat when I'm recording, but... It just, it was mind blowing to me to see how disrespectful these 40 something, late 30 something, mid 40 something adults was displaying towards a 70 something year old man. And granted, for 70, yo, he looks incredible, bro. I, I'm thinking because when he said uh, young men from 19 to 44, and I'm thinking, like, what is he talking about? And he's like, yeah, I say young because I'm 70. I'm like, God, Lee. Like, yo, he looks great for 70. But. The lack of respect that they displayed to this guy and then granted look i have respect for a lot of elder black women as well too my grandmother my mom my aunts um a lot of elder black women that i come into contact with whether it be out at work or out when i'm washing clothes at the gym whatever i always give respect but it's just like yo y'all disrespected this man and then y'all hold up the goddesses queen mother of the earth type vibe every single one of them regardless of what they do or say and it's just like yo bro come on man like, bro, we getting tired of the bull crap. Come on, man. Like, I just, yo, it's hard for me to really listen to people like that. And I'm really trying to challenge myself to listen to people that have difference of opinion in me because I feel like that's the only way to really truly grow, especially being able to hold your own in a situation where people, especially a lot of people that don't agree with you, you'll be able to have a level head and be able to, you know, have a conversation with those people. I don't always want to use the term debate because we shouldn't always, be, a conversation shouldn't always be a debate. But it baffles me how we don't want to look at a lot of the issues that the black community has as self-inflicted. Yes, has other races, including white people played a part in it? Absolutely. But what I will say is how come African-Americans, and I mean real African-Americans, people that move from Africa to this country, how come they are dominating, bro? They are in the top five percentile when it comes to earnings in this country. They're black, are they not? They're of African descent, are they not? They come to this country and they're up there with the Asians, the Indian community, the whites, they, they ain't even really up there like that But they're dominating Like bro we are at the bottom of the bottom If that were the case They wouldn't be able to come over here and do that neither If that were the case How come the Asians make way more than uh, Every other community They got stuff that they got They got stuff that, that that's put up against them too This is why I love sports man Because it's always going to be opposition Jordan didn't get those six rings 
just going into every arena shooting and seeing who can make the most shots before somebody missed. No, he had a team over there with coaches that were trying their hardest to stop him from winning, and he still won. LeBron James, Tom Brady, Floyd Mayweather, like, bro, this is why I love sports. There is always supposed to be opposition. That's the yin and yang of life. Regardless of the outcome of some of these matches, that's just the way it is. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is, bro. And it seems like for the longest, all we've been willing to do is cry about things and it overlooks some of the worst things in our community. And then when someone comes up with an actual, I won't say it was an answer for how we get further, but an actual reason as to why we really are to where we are, yo, it's, it's, it's almost like, it's almost like just, it, it, it's like to them you 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 scratching the chalkboard with, with, with hard sharp nails and that that sound and they like oh, I don't want to hear it I'm just like yo the more I see this the more it, and I really hate to say I lost hope but the more I see platforms like this the more I'm just like. Are we lost? Is there any hope? Is this like a one every man for himself situation to where they're like, all right, well, we got ours and we don't care about the bottom or we don't care about those that are really going through it that granted they may have made decisions that put themselves in that position to be where they are. But that doesn't mean that, you know, we have to lie to them as to where they are, because, bro, we've been lying to ourselves for the longest as to why we are where we are. Yo, bro, listen, we are not the first generation, but we are well past that time where we don't have to deal with blatant, open, outward, in your face, all caps racism. We don't have to deal with that the way that our ancestors did. And we've only gotten worse. We've only gotten poorer. We've only gotten more violent towards each other. I want to shout out to Larry Elder, man. Like I said, I don't agree with everything he says. Um, but guy is sharp man and that's what i aspire to be when i hear people say i don't do that reading because I, I know uh, a lot of people i used to kick it with um they always say to me that reading shit you be doing that reading shit and the more i separate myself the more i really try to work on really improving myself and stepping up into the the upper the upper class of this society and being able to offer something to offer something of value to the society, um, being able to place my family at a certain position in the society, do things for my my family that a lot of people won't be able to do. The more I'm starting to see that I really was around a lot of people that could care two shits about improving themselves. It's more about impressing other people as opposed to impressing themselves or where they can take themselves throughout this life. Um, and it's nothing personal. I always tell people this, like when they say, where you been? I ain't seen you. Um, yo, listen, I paid for mentorship, bro. And when this person gave me homework to do, I want to follow through in the homework. One to see if he knows what he's talking about. But yo, listen, I want to make change in my life, bro. Like, I remember since we always talking about the racist white man, I remember a white man said, um, I'm paraphrasing, but if you want to hide something from a black person, you put it in a book. So why do we talk about that reading shit when you should be reading up on as much shit as you possibly can? Yo, people just regurgitate things they seen on social media or they heard some other in uninformed person say without reading up on what they're hearing about. Yo, those same people are making children and bringing those same children in the world with those same ideals. Those kids don't have a chance at all, but at least they're fly. I used to think, man, I used to think we were so far behind when I was younger. And granted, my parents did the best they had with what they could because their parents didn't give them the game. But, you know, for all the materialistic things that we didn't have, you know, my parents fought hard to make sure we was protected, to make sure we had a chance in this world, to make sure, like... Yo, if you put your mind to this, you can do anything you want. Son, your job is to be better than me. My job is to make sure that you're better than me, that you're going to be better than me. And 
I used to always hear from teachers that you're lucky. My mom used to call up to the school all the time, all the time, and just see why, why, why this was happening, why that was happening. Like, I didn't know what she meant then, but y'all had parents that actually cared, bro. That actually cared where I was at. That actually cared that I was, you know, getting a good education. I was just a dickhead in high school and in middle school. Like, once I kind of got a gist of what was going on around me, I really wanted to try to fit in. I was, like, wildly insecure, and I wanted to be something that I wasn't. And what I'm trying to say is now that I'm starting to really figure out myself and figure out where I want to be in this world and the type of man I want to be. I, I seen an interview with Louis Farrakhan talking about Malcolm X, and he said, and I said this in a video before, he said, that's, one of the, that's the most disciplined man I've ever been around in my life. Seeing Larry Elder hold his composure, articulate himself, be intelligent amongst a bunch of loud fools, childish fools. And I read the comments and listen, it was hard to find people that was bashing him and saying, yo, Talzon was right, Charlamagne. Most of the people in them comment section was like, wow, like I don't really rock with him, but the way he held it down and handled himself, that's what a man does, bro. You don't get loud with fools like that. I remember Jay-Z said in a song, a wise man told me don't argue with fools because people from afar 